okay i'll be right in a minute it's susan at seaside stitches and here i am in my simplicity double two four seven the fourth one i've made i really love it and um welcome to my channel we are looking at this is a friday so it's going to be a friday so so i just wanted to pop on really because just to bring you up with my week or to start that process and also to remind you about the so yellow for endo now my vlog as part of the tour isn't until the 25th but i would like to just remind you that um your makes need to be in tomorrow the 23rd it's the 22nd today as i'm speaking to you so the 23rd the saturday the 23rd but jess has done an amazing job this year as usual and i'll be on on monday on the 25th and really it's kind of a roundup i will be sharing my make on instagram tomorrow with the hashtag so yellow for endo and tagging in at so what if i so and i hope to see as she said let's turn instagram yellow on the 23rd so i do hope that works and um yes there, there's an event tomorrow where there is a party at so so me sunshine and there are tickets for that and i think they're all so but they may not be but the main thing about the challenge is that you donate at least a pound if you possibly can and i think you have to <laughs> donate a pound and if you can afford more it's amazing because it's going to the endometrius endometriosis <laughs> may even be called endo uk i'm not sure but it's the support the charity that supports uh, the research into endometriosis and i'm not going into the details of all that it's just kind of a reminder for that just a quick update that i am working well on my I've got to check the camera on so. okay so just a very slight adjustment of the position of where i'm where i'm stood anyway um i managed to i've checked the camera and all i wanted to say was really my information at this point isn't any use so please just just look back either go on to jesse's um youtube channel <laughs> or our instagram and just check out all the details but there are loads of vloggers there are still there's a history of vloggers for this month so please just check them if you've not watched any of the videos and after the i think if we all check the instagram lives that she has done about endometriosis i think you may be really quite inspired at the amount of work that she puts in and the amount of it the amount of information you will receive from watching those li those lives so I'll, I'll move on from that now and uh yeah thank you for listening to that bit i just want to say that i am well on my way with my so frugal makes um my ideas there are some there's been some shifting and some changes and one of my lovely viewers has let me know that um the i always want to call it the mandy boat tea and it's nothing to do with a mandy or a boat tea it's the galaxy tea um that is no longer free pattern now i thought i checked it and i thought it was when i see that the five pound is in quite pale and i thought anyway i checked it as far as checkout and they still want you to pay five pounds so that's not really eligible um i've still managed to print all of it out i haven't made anything from that anyway but i did think of working out a cheeky way of uh, using it as an inspiration and just uh, borrowing the idea of a puff sleeve onto the plantain tea or the vera top um, and i noticed on the instructions on the galaxy tea on the on the website that if you that they insert the sleeve on the flat even though it's got gathers in now i've never done that before so that's another thing for me to try out so you still place it on the on the flat um between your two across here imagine this all flat <laughs> and then just place your gathers between the notches and i just thought well that's simple enough isn't it i do like to put an inset sleeve in normally but if we're looking at time and and rushing a little bit then that's a possibility so anyway um, i'm so pleased that i had so many views and so many subscribers from doing the so frugal thank you ever so much if you are one of those if you're not and you would still like to subscribe i'd be really pleased about it um, i'm so pleased also that i finished my dress i really love it i mean it's just so uplifting um it was sunny earlier and i thought i might be able to get a photograph but it's been too cold really so i didn't do that 
and I've just thought I'll maybe able to fit in a vlog because what I've been doing today um, is related to what I did a couple of weeks ago. So a couple of weeks ago, since I spoke to you last, because uh, I recorded my video the week before it went out, the my so frugal video. So since then, there's kind of been a couple of weeks to catch up on. And I went to a sewing social at the Sewing Institute at Lytham. And it's a lovely atmosphere and it's, um, yeah, the two people, the two and third person run it, they are trained um, adult head teachers. So you get a really kind of thoughtful experience from them because it's not kind of, it's not, um, it's a very enabling atmosphere. But we're not, on a social, we're not there to be taught, but they potter about and ask if there's anything and where we're up to and show interest and all that kind of thing. So it's lovely. And in talking to Lucy, um, she was saying that they were doing, a, in relation to something else, she said they were doing a shit. I want to call it shearing because that's what I grew up with, knowing it was shearing. But I'm not sheep shearing, it's shearing. <laughs> so there is a sh shearing workshop for tomorrow, a full day. And um, I'm going to do that because on my list for a couple of years, ever since I saw Alison at So Like Dotty making um, a bell dress, a style art bell dress in gingham, all different ginghams. Now she used a proper cotton um, gingham. After I'd been inspired by what she'd done, it actually made my eyes smile tears when I saw how lovely she looked in it. Um, she was making it partly for a toile to do the bell dress, but for a special occasion where she'd won an award for her um, Slimming World Group. And she was going to this event and she showed us that she wore that and she made two others, I think, in the same from the same pattern. But the way she'd put together the gingham, I was just so inspired and I thought, I want to do that. And at that point, I didn't have the pattern. and. Um, the next time we went on holiday, we went to Weymouth and I, I cruised the, the fabric shops until I found somewhere where they had um, different coloured ginghams and I bought a metre of each. And But it's only poly, it's only poly cotton. It's only poly cotton mine. So, but I'm using it as a toile. And um, she also made one. It was in the most beautiful fabric from Felicity Fabrics as part of their... Um, as one of their ambassador vlog bloggers. So she'd made a blog and a vlog about her making the style arc bell dress in that fabric. And it is absolutely superb. And it's on the back of that video that I did say to her, I'm finally getting that pattern. And I did get it. Um, I'll see if I can remember, I will put a link to her vlog where she is in the one that she made out of the Felicity Fabrics <laughs> fabric. Um, because it is stunning, as is this one. So they say that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Well, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to imitate you, Alison, if you're out there. And thank you for your inspiration. So um, also, I was going to take the pattern to cut out to the sewing social, the Northwest Sewing Social run by Christine at Gemini Stitches and I was going to take that and the day before I'd spotted that she'd got a premiere ready, a, a video premiered, ready to go on that, on that Wednesday morning where her and Sam at Sequin Girly Creates had done um, a dual kind of, not exactly a battle of the style art bell dress, but they'd both done it and um, just the same thing on two different bodies and just to see and in different fabrics and to see what that experience was like. So then I realised, well, I don't want to cut it out yet. I want to go. I want to wait until I've watched their vlog to see what what it throws up about anything I could learn from the pattern before I decide to cut into it. Um, so today I've cut into the I've cut the actual paper pattern out and I'm all ready to go with it. And the reason I've only I've done that is because it has shearing shearing on the sleeve and on the back um, the waistband at the back. And I just wanted to get that, not exactly perfected, but sort of under my belt so that I could 
go at this quite um, confidently, really. So I think I've kind of done my research, but obviously because of this fit issue I have, I don't want to make it in the fabric that I want it to be in forever, as long as forever is in terms of making it a, a make for ourselves with fabric. You know what that's like. So I know that I could titivate this one and make it look right enough for whatever I want it to look like. But I'm just aware that this is not a longevity, a longevity dress, given that it's in polycotton and that it's, it may not fit me. So it's worth, it's fine to, to risk because the whole thing of that was less than twenty five pound. And there is another one, a navy blue, that I've discarded for now. So, and also I thought it would be a bit of jiggery pokery trickery that I could follow a line. <laughs> but I won't need to. Well, I when I've done this course. I'll be fine with it. So um, there's just the advice that you can use a free pattern. You can do something self-drafted. But to get the bene biggest benefit from doing the course, um, if you've got something you can produce, even though you need to do it, you may want to do a bit before the session or a bit to take home and finish it. Um, it's a productive way of, of learning, isn't it? So that's what's on my mind. Um, now, I'm trying to think there was something else I was going to mention. Oh, I did buy some baby cord. I don't think I've told you about that. I bought some baby cord. Um, it's black with a little pink button. I've just got it. Very soft. It's almost just like brushed cotton rather than actually needle cord. Um, yeah, baby need needle cord. It's more of a baby cord. You can hardly find feel the ridges in it, but they are there. Now, if you're a bit eagle-eyed, you might realise that this doesn't look really like a waistcoat because that's what it was meant to look like. But then I decided I'd rather have a go at the Bakerloo collar, not the dress, not the top, just the collar, because I want to make something from the base of the blouse or the dress um, where this will fit on to make a dress that would fit me, that would suit me better. I don't like the oversized dresses. I don't like a, a big gathered at the waist dress. And um, I know the bell is, the bell dress has some gathers, but it not in a, it's not what I want really. So I loved this when I twirled it um, and I learned quite a bit from it. So anyway, I took this to the sewing social to cut it. Um, I came back with it, not really done anything with it. I'm just useless there. I'm just so, it's it's a beautiful place. There's some lovely people. But when I walk in, I can't, I can't concentrate. I think driving for an hour and a quarter um, and then not quite getting my bearings and, and walking into a room full of people and then sorting out my stuff. And anyway, the mistake I made my fabric isn't that, that wide. Well, it's that wide, but it's not wide enough to get the full um, frill piece out without a join. And so I thought, well, that's fine. I shall do that piece. And uh, I've got my, um, not raglans, salvages to cut off, but I can do that piece and then measure what I need extra. And then it should still be able to, if I can match the pattern a bit, it should be fine, just folded when it's pleated. I don't think it'd be too bad. So I did that, I cut this piece and then I was cutting the extra pieces. And only when I got back to my seat and decided to cut, to sew one end to the other, I realized that I'd turned my fabric round after I'd cut this. And so the other one has got the stripes, the, the needle cord going the other way. So forget about that for now. Um, but also in knowing that, well, before I knew that, I knew it wasn't going to be wide enough to give me all the pattern pieces that I needed in the two and a half. Yeah, well, I'd only got two metres because I was only making a waistcoat. So anyway, in the end, I just rang Fabrics at Fleetwood to see if she'd got any more. And we had a little funny conversation where she said, I think there's a 10 metres on that bolt, Susan. I don't think it'll have gone by tomorrow morning. <laughs> but yes, I will tell everyone that you want two metres of it. So anyway, that's that bit. And then I also went to fabric, no, to Little Legs Fabric to pick up a pattern 
that they'd printed for me, um, except that um, it must have been the projector file. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. So let's forget all about little fabrics. We're not bothered with that. I'll cut that bit out. Um, so yes, so I've had, I had a lovely, we had a lovely ride to Morecambe the week before, Alan and I, and we went, um, it wasn't massively wonderfully weather, wonderful weather, but we had a nice time. We love Morecambe and looking out over the estuary and over to the mountains, it's beautiful. And, and on the way back, we called up my sisters and we met her little grandson that is now three, but we'd not met him before and different circumstances have meant that it, it wasn't always possible to be there when he was there and all that. Anyway, um, he's staying with them more full time now. So that's, it was just lovely. We took some books that the boys no longer want and uh, need. Now they're, well, I don't know, eight and 10. No, one's nine now, the other will be 11 next week. So there you go. Um, so he just loved them and he was, it was so sweet. And then he did have us, um, there was, lava on the ground pick your feet up pick your feet up so we had to do the lava and then we got rid of the lager they had to pull the plug out and the lava ran away but then the snakes came it was just awesome we really had a lovely time and then the bag was on the floor that had taken all these books in and he went take your bag home you could take your bag home <laughs> so anyway it was really lovely and it just did make us miss our own grandchildren though we we're talking about catching up with her other grandchildren of which she has many and um, it was lovely and we had a really nice chat um, with her and her husband because he's often working away and we don't always see him. So that was lovely. And then um, this morning I rang my other sister who is usually off on a Friday and was off on a Friday. And we did talk about whether we would go over or not to have a chat. But I had my chat, about an hour long chat on the phone with her, which we haven't done that for ages. And she's the she's the sister who is coming. So Leslie, she's coming with me to the gathering, um, the Arit Good Do, over in Yorkshire. That's been run by Donna at Size Me Sewing and Sam at Frugalissima, and um, we're really looking forward to that. I'm, I managed to jump on some tickets once. Nadia mentioned it. Nadia from Stitch and Style with Nadia. Um, Stitch and Style by Nadia and she's going and she'd um, she'd said about the tickets being on sale so we've had them and we had the hotel booked quite early and I'm really looking forward to it that's at the end of April so my social journey and then went to the sewing social this week as I said at Northwest Sewing Social at, at it's Clayton Limores and I met another lovely lady that I'd not we, she'd been to one when I'd not been there and I've been to some while she's not been there and so a bit of a shout out there to Pauline and also a shout out to Shirley who did let me take her photograph because she's done it again and someone a relative or a friend has said oh I see you sewing now aren't you so can you make me this or can you alter this <laughs> and we're trying to teach her to say no <laughs> because lots of <clears throat> Lots of people who don't sew just think so easy just to run something up or oh well you'll be able to do this then won't you so anyway um she's coming on amazingly well is shirley and she's loving it and she's booked quite a few more socials so um yes it's lovely and it's it's a, just a very welcoming setup and that that although we had about 16 or 17 of us this time it doesn't feel like overpowering or anything <laughs> even though it sounds like I couldn't concentrate. I can't concentrate at the best of times. So I think I've just blurbed on for quite long enough and I want to get this edited as far as I can, possibly to get it out tonight, but I'm not sure because as I say, I've cut out the actual pattern. Ideally, I'd like to, it's, half four, it's four o'clock now. I'd like to cut out um, some of the pieces and just overlock them so that I can take them and not worry about whether they'll fray or not and um and then fiddle about with them so that's kind of what i'm going to do now depending on whether i edit or do this first 
but anyway it's lovely to have you with me thank you ever so much and thank you for your lovely comments and thank you for being patient with me and thank you for keep coming back i do really appreciate appreciate it and if i didn't say it before it's susan at cz stitches and if this is a friday sews thank you ever so much jen in today in jen's sewing room because it's just such a lovely hashtag where people can find each other and we can find each other and other people can find us and so thank you to sam and ruan for running the sew frugal challenge and thank you for thank you to oh, christine for running the social the northwest sewing social and sharon who puts up with us all and makes a lovely lunch for everyone and if there's any oh and, and lucy and katie and joe at the sewing institute so if there's anyone i've forgotten to thank thank you as well um Bye for now then, I'll see you next week sometime. Bye.